Good evening, everyone. This is the iBug Buzz episode number 558 for Monday, November 7th, 2022. I'm Maria and I will be facilitating the conference tonight along with Sandhya. This is an open forum for anyone with questions or issues with their iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Apple Watch, or Apple TV. And for anyone who would like to become more proficient in using the accessibility features of these uh, iDevices, in particular uh, voiceover and different accessories while voiceover is uh, running, such as braille displays, keyboards, uh, headphones, speakers, etc. So welcome to everyone who's joined in tonight live and to those listening to the conference via a recorded podcast playback. I'm going to now turn it over to Sandhya for some announcements to tell you about just some of the many things that we have going on and how you can stay connected with us so you can find out about everything we have going on. Sandhya. All right. Thank you, Maria. Maria, yes, we have a very busy week. So let's get started. All time central, all events on Zoom, except if specified otherwise. Okay, let's go. Here we are right now at the iBug Buzz for the next two hours. And we hope that you will last the whole two hours. <laughs> so then, Tomorrow, tomorrow will be mini buzz from five to six on the Clubhouse platform. And that is for anybody who didn't get their questions answered tonight. You can think about them in the middle of the night and write them down and come tomorrow. That's from five to six, mini buzz. Then Wednesday, we are off. Thursday, we have the Vila Book Club, 630. And we have a special facilitator this week, this month, actually, our, our very own Vincent. So come and support him. And we are so excited to have him uh, leading the meeting. And it is A Farewell to Arms, a pretty intense book by Herdis Hemingway. So come and check that out and come support Vincent. Then Friday, iBug Night at the Virtual Movies, 8 p.m., 7 for, 7.30 for the social time. And then following the movie, we'll have a discussion and some exciting trivia. It's amazing how much we have learned over, over the last several months and years, actually. Uh, what else? Let me tell you about our... Oh, we had a wonderful event last this past Saturday. The iBug Unplugged, and it was Melodies and Memories, facilitated by our Pete Lane, and he did an awesome job, and we had lots of participation and competition, and it was a brutal battle till the end, and it was awesome. So we hope that we will do that again, and uh, thank you, Pete, and thank you for everybody that attended and supported the call. Okay, then now, social media. Our website is ibugtoday.org, I-B-U-G-T-O-D-A-Y.org. That's the best place to get all the information there. You can register to be a member of iBug and then you'll get all your notifications via email. And so that's a great way to get information on a regular basis. You can listen to our podcast there. On the, our, all of our podcasts are posted there under the, rele the relevant tabs. Uh, what else? Then we have a Twitter at iBug Today. And then we have a Facebook.com slash group slash iBug Today to post information, share information, good way to check out what's going on. And we have an email is iBugToday at gmail.com. All right, Maria, handing it back to you. All right. Thank you, Sandhya. So now let's uh I'll take a moment to go around and introduce ourselves and where we are from. So you'll have to unmute, as I described um, before, in order to do that. So I'll begin. I'm Maria in Albany, New York. Pete from Jacksonville, Florida. Hello. This is Brad. I'm in Dallas, Texas. Welcome. This is Earl. I'm in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Welcome. Oh, Terry from Arlington Heights, Illinois. 
Welcome, Terry. And who else did I hear? Marie from Reno. Marie, welcome. Marcia from Sarasota. Welcome. Helene from Woodstock, New York. Hello. Ken up in Colorado. Welcome. <clears throat> Jody from Swansea, New Hampshire. Hello. Ned from Texas. Welcome, Ned. <clears throat> Thank you. Thomas from Colorado. Hello, welcome. Greg in Texas. Welcome. Brian from Ontario, Canada. All right, welcome. welcome. I'm there from Houston. Hello. Linda from Texas. Welcome. <clears throat> Anyone else like to say hello? Elizabeth from Newfoundland, Canada. Hello, welcome. Wow, we're international. Very cool. All right. Anyone else? All right. Uh, do we have any first time callers this evening? Don't think so, but always like to check just in case. <laughs> all, right. all right. Very good. Welcome back to you all. Great to have you joining us again. So with that, who would like to get us started this evening with the first question? Comment. If you've had any experiences with a new app or an app update, or if you've recently upgraded your iOS version and are having some kind of question about that, or just uh, just any feature, really, as you're going along and using your devices. Thomas in Colorado. Okay, go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, I uh, took the plunge and finally updated to 16. All right. And uh, I have noticed, though, and, and I don't know if anybody else has had this issue. I've had two occasions where the gesture with the one finger to the swipe up from the bottom of the screen to go to the home screen, it mm -hmm. will not work. So then like if you're in an app and you're trying to flick up to go, um, it doesn't work. Now I'm able to open other apps with Siri, but if I try to go back to my home screen, it won't go back to the home screen. The only way to fix it is to turn the phone completely off and turn it back on again. This happened to me twice. Has anybody else had this concern? All right. I'm done and which, speaking. Which phone are you using? Uh, a 12 Pro. Okay. And who was that Brian? Who did I just hear? No? Uh, I thought I heard someone trying to come in with a comment. Okay. This is Brad. Go ahead, Brad. It wasn't me before. This is me now, though. Um, yeah, that's what I, I didn't sound like you before. <laughs> to, to clarify, um, which, which exact version of iOS 16 are you using 16.1 or perhaps are you on an earlier version no it, it's 16.1 I waited okay. for that one to come out so that um because I wanted to get it on my iPad as well so yeah well mm -hmm. there was an issue with earlier versions that had to do if you were using invert colors that messed up the ability to go to the app switcher uh, hmm. I'm not sure if that's the issue you're talking about, but no, that issue is clear. It's gone with 16.1. So I don't know. I don't have any, any explanation for what you're experiencing now. Yeah. This is Thomas again. Okay. Yeah. It, it wouldn't even let me go to the app switcher. And when I turned on voice control and I would say, go home, usually it would go to the home screen, but it wouldn't go to the home screen. So I knew it was a glitch in the iOS and it's happened to me only twice, but if it does happen to somebody, just remember, turn your phone completely off and turn it back on. And that seems to fix the problem. Thank you. Okay. I'm done speaking. All right. Well, thank you for that tip. Wow. That is, it just goes to show you just with so many different configurations out there, what one, one person is experiencing, another might not be and vice versa and such. So um, hopefully that doesn't uh, happen to you too frequently from now on. All right. Very good. 
Who would like to ask the next question? No Facebook questions. It's been a while since we've had one of those. This is David. Go ahead, David. Yeah, so I just uh, recently installed the uh, iOS uh, 16 and um, it seems like notifications, uh, not notifications, I'm sorry, um, reminders, they're, they're not showing up on my notification center like they used to. Like you just kind of show up in a little section kind of near the top. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know, I missed one today. I was, I was looking at my phone almost all day, you know, uh, off and on, and I never saw the, the um, alert, you know, that, it, that uh, I usually get for that one. But right. I don't know if they redesigned that or... <clears throat> all right has anyone else experienced this not seeing reminders well i'll i'll say that i have experienced it <laughs> um <Okay>. i <clears throat> so i um i don't know if this has to do i'm guessing you don't have are you using a default lock screen or are you using the customized a customized one i haven't messed around with the new lock screen but i guess is that Okay. Are they going to show up now? Well, so they can show up. Well, no. So it's interesting. I, I I mentioned that because I have customized mine, and I feel like I have the same issue, whether it's the lock screen or the notification center. And I feel like it's all. It seems to me like it's somewhat of a scrolling issue, which I feel like every iOS update or so, some thing happens with notifications not working properly for a while. And so, like, not even just reminders. Like, I've had this. Um, even for just any notification that is, I use the no, notification summary, but for anything that I want to receive directly, like, you know, reminders or, you know, Uber notification that my vehicle is, you know, approaching or, you know, DoorDash that, you know, my order has been picked up or, you know, whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's like very inconsistent as to whether I actually see it on the, uh, in the notification center or the lock screen when I'm just flicking around. And I kind of find I have to like scroll vertically a bit like up and down and then flick around and I may or may not actually see it there but it's more likely that I will if I scroll if I scroll vertically mm. yeah yeah okay uh go ahead Brad you know they have moved them they used to be more higher um at, at a whatever you want to call it at a higher up location on the lock screen like closer to right below the the time yeah, and I guess because of lock screen or, or lock screen widgets, they've yeah. now moved notifications, so they're at the bottom of the home screen. Is that what you're talking about? Because uh, then, then they yeah. then Go they ahead. start out at the bottom, and when a new one comes in, the first one moves up, and the new one's below it. So they start to come up from the bottom. All right. Thank and then you there's a different that. way you can configure them so that they could be stacked. And then you'll tap on one and it may be like, say, Uber, and they could be stacked and you tap it to open up the stack and then two or three of them all, you know, get unstacked and are spread out now like, you know, and I don't have mine that way because I don't have any widgets I just um, I just have, you know, whatever notifications, they just start showing up on top, you know, above each other in a vertical arrangement. But that maybe that's, I don't know if that's what you're asking you about. This is Marie. Um, go ahead, Marie. Ever since I updated to 16, the even prior versions, I'm on 16.1 now, and they fixed it somewhat. But notifications have been intermittent problems off and on. Before 16.1, I could tap on a, a message that came up on my lock screen, and it refused to open the messaging app and go to that thread. That's working now. But I find that sometimes uh, today I cleared a message off of the lock screen because I didn't want to uh, uh, interact with it at that moment. And in a few minutes, the same message alert popped up again, even though I had cleared it. So notifications definitely have some bugs. All right. Thank this you. is Pete. Jody. All right. First, we'll go to Pete and then Jody. Uh, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to clarify what Marie just said. So 
the problem, because I've not updated to 16.1 yet, but the problem that I'm having now, where if I tap on, I'm getting notifications on my lock screen, but when I opened them in the past prior to 16.0, uh, if I tapped on those notifications, they would open uh, and go to that notification. Like if it was a message, it would go to that message screen in the messages app. Has that been resolved? This is Marie. It seems to me so far, my experience is that it now does open up the app for that for that particular alert. So that okay. seems to be fixed in 16.1. Yes. Okay. I'll uh, defer to Jody. I have another question, Marie, but I'll defer to Jody. Okay, sure. All right. Go ahead, Jody. Well, thank you. I, I just want to make a quick comment. I would probably go into notifications under settings and see if things have been accidentally turned off with the update because that, that can happen. All right. I've, yes, absolutely. Updates have been known to do strange things. I have lost my Braille display connections after updates. Mm. So, yes. All right. Well, good this luck. To, all right. Go ahead, David. Oh, <clears throat> so I guess there's not a way like to have the reminder show up like at the very top of your notification little drop down, pull down. It seems like that's where they should be because those are the ones that you set yourself. I mean, other things are like news and stuff that, yeah, it's nice to see that stuff, but if it's something that you actually put on your calendar or wanted to remind you at a certain time of the day, you know, to do something, if it's not showing up, it kind of makes it uh, um, yeah. <laughs> useless. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. my, I mean, what, a, no, a reminder that doesn't remind you. So I don't know. Right. Maybe I'll talk with one of these <clears throat> third party reminder apps. And maybe those will be better. Yeah. And maybe those but, will. Yeah. Maybe. And I know I, I know I should. I'm going to try and play. I, I remember the widget itself for the home screens wasn't uh, that useful. Um, maybe I should see if there's a widget on the lock screen and that might be more reliable if you're feeling adventurous and. Yeah. Um, I know they've improved it a little. I used, there was an Apple Viz podcast on uh, customizing the lock screen. So I managed to uh, to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I I can definitely relate. I've, I've had that happen as well. And just, like you said, yeah. Well, I, I just typed in like, you know, we'll search the top. I typed in reminders and it did pull them up, you know. Um, oh, dear. You know, you can, you can search through your, not your notifications, but. Yes, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've that's... almost, yeah. I've almost found like if I miss the reminder sound because I have reminders too and it's like if I happen to miss the notification somehow I'll just like I feel like I check you know I, I open the reminders app and kind of look in my today and see if there's anything in there but yeah I agree with you it's definitely uh, a bit of a problem all right well hopefully that will get fixed sooner rather than later um all right uh pete i think you had another question yes thank you marie and i, I we may have discussed this previously in the buzz <clears throat> and if so i apologize whenever i dictate and again i've not updated to 16.1 yet um but whenever i dictate and it now i'm quite sure it's in any any text field in any app i i dictated today in Facebook and the same problem occurred where the vo uh, voiceover is not and but dictate as opposed to using Siri. I'm, I'm just doing this two finger double tap, the magic tap uh -huh. in the text field. And voiceover is not repeating my dictation when I've completed it, uh, where it used to prior to 16.0. I'm wondering if anyone else has experienced that and if so, has anyone seen it resolved with 16.1? All right. And just to clarify, so it is inserting if you go in and. Uh, yes, it's there. Yeah, I have to swipe there. left and then right, right again back. Yeah. And then it okay. reads it, but not automatically like it did before. Sure, sure. All right. Anyone have experience with dictation and can let us know this how it's. This is Earl in Toronto. All right. Go ahead, Earl. Um, I'm using 16.1 on an iPhone 12 Pro, and it's kind of hit and miss, to be honest. Pete, for me, um, there are times when I dictate if I use the two-finger double tap and then do the two-finger double tap to end. Sometimes voiceover will um, speak the dictation, and other times it won't. So it's really a hit and a miss. So I've just gotten into the habit of doing what you do, where I 
where I swipe left and right or right or left or whatever, and right. then get it to read the the field. But in 16.1, it will do it part of the time. At least that's been my experience. I don't know mm-hmm. about anyone else. Okay. So I can't say it's totally resolved. Let's put it that way. All right, Earl. Thank you very much. All right. Anyone else on this one experience? This is Helene. Go ahead, Helene. Um, I find that um, Pete's correct. It is intermittent. But if I know what I said, if I swipe and press post, then it reads to me. I just don't like posting it because if I didn't know it did it correctly, then I could be posting something that could have a lot of funny little errors. But um, if I'm bold enough to just press post, it always reads it to me. I find it always, it's just Pete. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Pete. Yep. Uh, when I do flick left and then back right again and it, and it voiceover goes, the focus goes back into the text field. Uh, either way, as, as Earl said, it works left, right, and then, or left, right. Then it, it seems to read it every time. Uh, but then it will reveal any errors that I've made or that it's made in understanding my initial dictation. But uh, I won't post it without hearing it first. I'm with you, Helene. I don't always <laughs> trust it. And I think it's more uh, problems or mistakes in uh, understanding mm-hmm. my dictation than my dictation mm-hmm. being uh, in error to begin with. Of course mm-hmm. not. Yeah. I can't make mistakes, right? <laughs> oh, I think all of us have learned yeah, not I'm to sure. completely trust the dictation. Oh, thanks, Lori. <laughs> this is Marie. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Marie. Um, I, I think Helene may be talking about on Facebook, which I don't use Facebook, but when I de- dictate in text message and so forth, I have a little better luck if I double tap the dictate button rather than doing the two finger double tap. It seems like it's a little uh-huh. more reliable to read it back. So Uh-oh. you might give that a try. I will. All right. Very good. All right. Anyone else on this one? All right. This, well, is, very- this is Brad. Oh, yes, go ahead, Brad. I would just say, you know, I went through the the various 16.0 um, versions, and there were all kinds of, of little bitty things. And they they, for the most part, the bugs I experienced seem to disappear with 16.1. It is much less problematic than the first round of 16 was 16.0, 16.0.1.2. Was there a 0.3? I don't remember, but 16.1 cleared up a lot of the issues. So if you have a running 16, I would encourage you to go ahead and update to 16.1. I think you'll be happy or at least happier with 16.1 than what's going on with the earlier versions of 16. All right. We'll do. All right. Very good. And I have heard that 16.2 is in beta already. So hopefully that will be out soon and we'll fix even more of these issues. Go ahead, Brad. Just read today on Apple Insider that there is a 16.1.1. Oh. That will have bug fixes and that, what is it? The SOS by satellite feature oh, for the yes. iPhone 14, 14 is expected yeah. to be released very soon oh, before right. 16.2. So oh, very cool. I'll well, have I have that to look forward to. Absolutely. I, I, more bug fixes. <laughs> Let's hope some of those bug fixes relate to voiceover. And we shall see. Sometimes I've even seen release notes uh, mention voiceover bug fixes. So that is good. And I don't think we'll be able, I guess we'll have to see, but I don't think we'll be able to demo how the satellite uh, feature works on uh, iBug here, because I think that only kicks in right when you don't have a sufficient signal. So this is Herbie. To... Go ahead, Herbie. So I actually posted a link about the satellite feature today. Um, it is not expected to be released until 16.2. And you can find more information if you visit us on Facebook by going to facebook.com slash groups slash iBug today. Very nice. Very nice. And also good, on our Twitter at iBug. On the tw- I was going to say you haven't plugged your own Twitter mastering. All right. Well, very good. Yes. Do follow us on social media for all the latest. Yes. So, yeah, it's expected to come out in 16.2 is what the verdict is, what they're saying. So, yeah. All right. And again, hopefully one of those things we won't need. And I don't know how much we'll be able to, you know, figure out ahead of time how uh, how it would work. But 
I guess uh, hopefully more to come in some way that isn't an emergency. All right. Uh, who would like to ask, excuse me, who would like to ask the next question? This is Marty. Go ahead, Marty. Um, I think last week, I'm not sure if it was Pete or Greg that mentioned that in accessibility and audio visual um, in that menu block or whatever, there was um, a feature where you could either turn off or turn on your shutdown sounds. Um, I haven't found that. And I'm wondering if I'm looking in the wrong place or if it's because I have an iPhone 8 and that that feature is not, you know, in my 16.1 update. Sure, for my sure. Phone. All right. Who would like to answer that one? All right. Well, um, I can let you know, Marty, it's because of your phone model. Um, that is only a feature available in the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max um, because it actually is at the level of the uh, the chip itself. So during the boot up and and um, and shutdown sequence before the uh, before iOS even loads is when the sound uh is is heard and so it's only this newest um i forget which number are we on a16 i forget now but it's only that newest uh chip that supports that so um it is uh i'm sure you know in moving forward right it's going to be there so for newer models and such but uh the uh, only models right now that support that are the 14 oh. pro and the 14 pro Max. this is marty what type of tone is it a tone or what type of oh sound? it is, is a it? yeah we can do a little demo i've i've turned mine so i'm just going to um gonna unlock the phone here just moving a little farther so i can use face id <laughs> all right there we go and now so we're gonna speech on if i uh i'm gonna just hold my um, side button and volume up for a couple of seconds. Emergency call. Okay, and we're going to flick to the left a few times. So you'll hear um, one, the power off sound will be a descending tone and the power on sound will be an ascending tone. And it's almost, it's just very, um, it almost, you almost kind of feel even like a little vibration just because of the sound uh in in the phone itself it's not a taptic but you do kind of feel a vibration so here we go i'm going to double tap on double tap to power off so that was the shutdown sound and um i didn't hear that we, we oh, couldn't hear it maria oh, no. all right i'll have to try that again I, I had my phone right near the mic so here we'll try now with when this was herbie nice. Um, sure. One sec. Um, I was going to say too, what's nice with the start up sound is you can just keep holding that side button until that sound um, comes on. Um, go ahead, Herbie. I know there are places as well um, where you gonna, can click on a link. to. See. Right. I was going to suggest if you have your original, uh, try enabling your original sound. That might. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Oh, very good call because yeah, Zoom is going to uh, probably thought that was uh, a lot of that, noise. Yeah. yeah. You think I would have learned what it filters out by now. All right, let's try that again. And then I can do the shutdown and the, so you can hear both of them because they are nice. All right, original sound is on. So now we're going to, I'm just going to hold that side button uh, for a few seconds until I uh, okay. hear that sound. So here we go. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Almost oh, like good call. Bell. Yeah. So there's that one, and then I'll show you. I'll shut it down again so you can hear it, the shutdown sound. Literally, just goes in the other direction. Um, uh, what is that? Descending, like it from a from a higher to a a lower state. So I will, in just one second here. Once my phone, um, here we go. It's connecting via. Here's my Braille display connection. All right. Here we. Go. All right. So now I've, I'm just gonna. Batteries, widget. Okay. So now if, again, I'm gonna press and hold the side button and the volume up. Double tap to power off. And I'm gonna flick to the. Double tap to power off. And that's where we want to be. So I'm gonna double tap. And there is the shutdown sound. So hopefully. The first time them. you heard was Marty's clock. But... Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. This is Brad. Go ahead, Brad. Just an update, Maria. Um, beginning with 16.1, uh, 
any iPhone running 16.1 will do the shutdown sound because they've incorporated into the iOS version. But the start up sound is, like you said before, it's still dependent on the chip in the 14 Pro, 14 Pro Max. Because All right. I, I didn't catch that at first because I have a 14 Pro. Right, right. Exactly. pointed out yeah. to me and I've tested it. I have a SE 2020 that I use like a iPod touch uh -huh. and it will do the shutdown sound, but not the start up sound. This, this right. is Marty. Go so, ahead, Marty. So Brad, do you can, is there a command though? Like, is there a setting well, in, in, mine, in mine, this is Brad. Yeah, this is Brad. Oh, yep, mine was ahead, on Brad. by default and, but you can find it if you go into oh god i never can remember it's under Somebody accessibility yes that's it's yes. under audio, audio visual. visual it's under accessibility it is not under voiceover but swipe down to correct audio it's, it's it's audio something and when you open it up it's a toggle and it's farther on down the list i i wasn't um, that i think audio visual is that it or probably is that yeah, is I wasn't yeah. there I'm trying Where is to it in that? Is it at the swipe, bottom? swipe farther on down in it and you'll find a toggle tap on, you know, okay. tap, it'll say button, tap it. It turns it on, tap it. It turns it off. Mine was on by default. When I yes, first learned okay. about it, I went and looked at my SC 2020. It had it and it was on and I never noticed it because I never turned the thing off ever. Sure. I did the yeah. update and I had never powered it off. So I used the thing just to play music on on my bluetooth speaker in my mm -hmm. office so sure sure yeah i'll have to try my work iphone as an yes, sc 2020 yes. so mm -hmm. you find it so you go more do you go under here so once you're in accessibility you're going to go under the hearing heading and you'll That's see it. audio visual and That's then it. when you go into there you should see it says well maybe yours will only say power off or shut down or something but mine says again sorry maria we had to oh, mute okay, thanks Okay, uh, everybody remember to please minimize your background noise. Okay, Maria, you got muted. Thank you. And I did, I think I, thanks for that, Cynthia. And I do think I heard someone else uh, wanting to come in. Yeah. This is Probably. Terry. Yeah, go ahead, Terry. Um, I'm thinking that that feature, I thought I heard somebody say last week that it's not available um, uh, uh, before like, I, uh, the SE 2020 or something. So it wouldn't be available with the iPhone eight. Ah, all right. Well then, unfortunately, Morty, it sounds like potentially you might be out of luck with that, with your model. All right. Very good. Well, with that, this Good discussion there. Who would like to ask the next? Oh, go ahead, Herbie. So here's something interesting I discovered um, because I recently got them fixed or I would have discovered it sooner. So I had AirPods issues and I got them fixed. But um, something that I, it's if you miss the old Siri sound and you have AirPods, at least on mine, if I activate the Siri button using the AirPods, like the crown button on the AirPods Max or squeezing in the side on the AirPod 3, it actually still makes the old Siri tone. Hmm. Interesting. Yep. Now, if you do it on the phone, it's you're still going to get the new tone. It had, but if you specifically press it on the AirPods, I still get the uh, old Siri tone that way. So I thought I'd just throw that out there for anybody that misses it, the uh, old Siri tone. Sure. All right. Well, thank you for that. That is very interesting that they haven't updated that. Maybe it's only now that Marty. I said it, they'll probably get updated in the next I was just going to so. say, yeah, <laughs> enjoy while it lasts. This is, this <laughs> if you prefer Marty. that tone. Go ahead, Marty. I think, yeah, I've noticed that with some of my Plantronics uh, Bluetooth headsets. And I think when you use the dictate feature, um, so in other words, if, if you're trying to do a, a message or I do it, I use it when I do a birthday wish or something in Facebook, if you use the dictate feature, which is on the, you know, on the bottom near the home button, um, I think you also get the old Siri tone. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. All right. Thank you for that. All right, very good. Who would like to uh, ask the next question or make the next comment? This is Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Um, I, it's not quite quarter till, so I hesitate. Or, but um, anyway, uh, and you might be a, a really good one to answer this question, Maria, because you are an avid Braille user. Uh -huh. has 16 I have not updated to 16 yet and yeah. so I'm at 15.7 where whatever whatever the most the latest iOS 15 update there is before yeah. you have to update to 16 so if I were to update to 16.1 have they fixed the problems that were uh, uh, existing with uh, with Braille, um, or are there still a lot of bugs with the Braille? Because that's one of the reasons I'm hesitating. Yeah, yeah, no, that's understandable. Um, yeah, I mean, there definitely are still bugs, and um, some some of it depends on your display. Like I have heard, for example, um, people who are using any of the, the newer human wear that displays the brilliant or the chameleon or the um, NLS e-reader um, that they have um, when you press dot eight for an enter, it would invoke the context menu instead of the enter key. Um, I have not experienced that with my focus, um, but I have experienced things like... Um, I'm trying to think what carried over from 15 and what got introduced in 16. Uh, like I've, I have found times where my uh, Braille uh, grade setting won't stick. So I have to make sure this is for input. So I have to make sure I, you know, toggle it to make sure that it's set how I am expecting. Um, usually it will be uh, contracted Braille. And so, um, you know, if I do want like eight dot, then I have to toggle into it. But then sometimes randomly it'll switch itself to eight dot. So, you know, um, there's that. And then yeah. sometimes um, if I'm typing like a lot in a, you know, paragraph, it might, it'll start like slowing down. Um, I feel like that happened way, way, way in the past. And then it got fixed and it's recurred again. Um, I have had issues where in... Oh, what? Oh, when when like deleting things, especially um, the cursor will jump uh, sometimes uh, a bit like to the left or instead of deleting things, it, it's very weird. It'll like duplicate part of what you were just deleting and will like copy and paste that. I think the root of, of I think a lot of this Apple has tried to do a better job of having their trans the the translation be like, you know, it's supposed to be like how it is in you know, Windows, for example, in, in like, say, the JAWS screen reader, where it's looking at what you've typed between spaces and punctuation, and, um, you know, translating that correctly based on context versus just looking at what you have, you know, if you've typed in a letter, like in the middle of a word, it shouldn't just look at that letter in isolation, it should look at the entire, you know, string. And so they are trying to do that. And it, it that is, in that you know actual bit is is better but just there are some of these you know consequences right now in the implementation that it leads to some of these weirdnesses like if you delete you know characters and such so it's um i wouldn't say it's the you know most uh pleasant experience um i mean it is you know usable just depending on your use case i, I forget if you had in 15 uh the the latest version there was that issue with the scrolling of pages like in in uh the kindle app for example or in books or some such where it would oh what was it it would take you to the bottom of the page uh when you scrolled instead of to the so the bottom of the next page instead of the top as it was supposed to and that has been resolved so i guess the uh, the short answer is kind of it's like a mix bag <laughs> um it's it's not anything as severe as like oh you can't use a display at all but you know depending on your use case you you might want to wait or you might be able to um 
you know, live with it. And some some of the bugs were addressed. If you go on the on Apple Viz, uh, if you look at the bugs in sixteen, uh, there is a post on sixteen point one, and I forget now which bugs it does mention. Some braille bugs being fixed, but again, it's definitely not all of them. There there is still some out there. All right. And anyone else? Did I any other? Let's see. Not sure if there are any other. Yeah, there are Braille. Any anything earth shattering that I missed? All right. Well, with that, hope that helps you to make a decision. <laughs> and um, all right. Who yeah. would like? <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Didn't sound that great, but you know. It's like you're caught between a rock and a hard place, oh, yeah. you know. And, I know. It's, it's well, amazing. Just when I use my Hable, uh, my Hable one, where it's you know doing the translation, and it's like you know I just don't encounter some of these issues because iOS isn't handling the braille. Oh, uh, this is Terry. That's good to know. If yeah. I have a Hable one, maybe I'll oh, do it well, that. Yeah, there you go. Sometimes I do still get, which I've noticed too. So I'm thinking it might be the latest um, version of the Braille translator that sometimes when you type in a dot six for a capital in the beginning, it sometimes mm -hmm. takes it as like a comma. But um, but I don't think that's their fault. Because like I said, I've had that with iOS too. But but yeah, it's it is a more, more stable with the Havel, like you're not having, you know, if you're typing a long passage, it's not missing, you, you know, letters and it's not slowing down and your cursor is not jumping if you press the backspace, you know, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good to know. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck with that. All right. Who would like to ask the next question? Linda? Go ahead, Linda. I have a YouTube question. Um, when they say ring the bell, if you'd like to be notified of when this particular, you know, YouTube program comes up again, where is the bell? All right. Who would like to answer that? Where is the bell? I do think we have some YouTubers out there. Would anyone? Oh. Uh. All right. Um, I'd have to look. So what it's referring to is the notifications. So when you're when you've subscribed to a channel, um, you can decide what kind of notifications you want to get, like all of them or only occasional ones. And um, I'm trying to think where because actually the, the YouTube app had a recent update and I believe it's changed a little. So like I just went into a channel and if I go under, so this is past all of the home videos, live playlists, et cetera. So that's one of the updates. They've separated live broadcasts into a separate live tab. Um, there's an options button here after the uh, a bit of the about page. Aha, uh -huh. and now... So once I uh, select options here, I have notifications, I have all or personalized or none and an option to unsubscribe and the dismiss. So um, that's where you can go in and select. But the bell just basically allows you to have those notifications. Um, so you have to subscribe, you want to subscribe to the channel. And then uh, I believe by default, the notifications are set to the personalized option, which is kind of like YouTube tries to base it on, you know, it's, it's the algorithms, right? What you've been watching and it tries to figure out if you would be interested in this newest upload. But like I said, you can go in, you search for the actual channel or find it under your subscriptions tab and you go into it. And then um, after a little bit of a preview of the bio data, you'll have the more, op uh, options excuse me options button and um and then you can uh pick what notifications you want to get from there or okay, unsubscribe great. if you if you so choose that's where that's done now yeah that, that recently changed so all right great thank you very good all right who'd like to ask the next question All right. Any um, any new 
apps that folks have tried, perhaps. This is Jody. All right, go ahead, Jody. Yeah, this this is probably I probably shouldn't ask this question because I haven't updated to 16 yet. But if I'm on a web page or in an email and I swipe down with two fingers to read the whole uh, message, sometimes it will do the equivalent of the back button. And I I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I actually stopped doing it because it, it, would, it would mess things up. But I wondered if anybody else had that problem or if I should just update. This is Ruby. This is Brad. All right, uh, let's see. We'll go to Herbie first and then I'll go to Brad. So first of all, I would definitely say you should update unless you have some real concern that an app you're using is not going to work. But aside from that, I'm thinking an update isn't actually going to solve that particular problem. I think that's a custom gesture issue and I would redo one of the gestures, either the sale gesture if it'll let you do that or the back gesture so okay. that way they don't conflict but maybe brad has a different suggestion Thanks all right go me. ahead brad uh i was gonna say i experienced the same thing jody's talking about i do a two finger swipe down to read something and it goes back i assume that what i'm doing is just a real quick and sloppy swipe down and the uh iphone thinks i'm doing a scrub <laughs> Uh, but, okay, um, that's I'm point. on 16.1. Oh. I've been experiencing it even more since I've gone ah. to 16, 16, the different versions of 16.0. And I still experience it on 16.1 more than I ever did before. But I'm also got a different phone. So I don't know if it's the phone, the new phone versus the old phone or the iOS 16 versus the older iOS. But I just assume it's me that the, that Either the phone or the OS is more sensitive, and I'm just doing my swipe down quick and dirty, and it ends up being interpreted as a swipe. Um, this is Pete. A scrub. Pete. Right. Go ahead, Pete. <laughs> I just want to concur with Brad. I, I've experienced that uh, for. I'm in six. Not not sixteen one, but other. I'm in the lower sixteen, and it's been happening since fifteen. If I'm, or maybe even fourteen. And I think it's that I'm doing it too fast, and it and it gets sloppy, like Brad said. Because if I if I come back, I'm determined to make it right, to make it happen properly, and I do it slowly, and uh, and it reads down. So um, yeah, just try it a little bit slower and a little bit more gentle. Be gentle, okay, Jody. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank oh, you. Very good. Good luck with that. All right. Who would like to ask the next question? This is Jody. I have another question. On, nobody else does. All right. Well, I'm not hearing anyone right now. So go ahead. Okay. I use Access Note, which is a word processor that was developed by APH, I think. And one of the hesitations I have on updating is I don't know if that app, app will still be supported in 16.1. Does anybody use that app? And how does it work with 16.1? It's a really nice app, too. Mm -hmm. This is Jerry from Vermont. All right, go ahead, Jerry. Uh, I used to use it, but apparently they no longer... I think it's access note that I'm talking about. They no longer, um, you know, it's it's no longer supported or something. I I would I would say uh, it it came it, when I bought it. It was like seven bucks or something like that, and then it became a free app, and then it they no longer produce it. So I I I don't think they do. Maybe other people have a different experience, but uh, so I would get. Yeah, it may withstand the update. It may not. I I no longer have it on my phone. Uh, I I use the I, the regular Notes app or or the uh, the other processing apps that you can get on the phone, Drafts and Voice Dream Writer and whatever. I hope that helps. Oh, thank you, Jerry. This is Jody again. Um, yep, go ahead, I noticed it's not in the App Store, and I did get it when it was free, yeah. but I noticed that it's not in the App Store anymore, which is why I wonder if it. If it would be, that's why I question whether it would be supported. Um, 
I've got a uh, voice dream uh, note writer, but I haven't actually played with it. And I'm curious to know how that works. Ah, all right. Well, I would suggest, I know um, Winston put some help uh, uh, documentation typically in his apps. I'm trying to, th I'm going to look quickly um, in, in writer to see if there is any, so that might definitely be a good opportunity to good. play. Yeah, that might yeah. Be I, cause I, I know I used it too. It was actually, um, access note. I want to say it was developed by like the American foundation for the blind. Uh, for some reason, I'm thinking of yes. access world. Yeah. Because they used to have that app as well. And then they don't anymore. I think they've just gone out. They've, they've done a lot of like restructuring of, of themselves and, um, so yeah, they, they don't have those apps available. Um, but yeah, this may be a a good uh good opportunity to play with Voice Dream Writer. And I know, that. I know, um, so Voice Dream Writer, it has um like you can save you uh write and save in a txt format, but I know it supports uh markdown. So um, you know, potentially like you can um on your you know, if you have like a computer set up, you can use um uh, what are they called? Like plugins for word processors that will convert that markdown into uh, formats. So you can still, you know, write, you know, headings and, and numbers and things, a uh, numbered uh, lists if you need to. But, um, but yeah, it's a convenient, I, I do have it and you can enable iCloud syncing. So, um, so yeah, that could be, and that one's, that one is, I don't believe he uh, updates it as frequently as the uh, voice stream, uh, you know, writer and scanner, but it could be a good opportunity to, to play. Well, thank you, Maria. Those are my favorite apps. Cool. Oh, yes. I love them. They're there. They live voice stream readers in my dock. Yeah. <laughs> so, very good. Thank you. Yep. And actually, let me mention for you all, because I just learned this through my contact with, so voice stream support, I actually got uh, from uh, Winston himself, the developer. <laughs> um, so he, so I had written to them asking if, VoiceOver supports the M4A file format. This is the compressed audio that uh, is used like in, um, you know, like iTunes purchases, but also wh where I was having the, you know, thought was more in Zoom recordings. And um, because I know it supports MP4 and that M4A is the same type of, you know, family of, of file. And, but when I would be using the uh, file, the internal file browser with invoice stream reader to add files, it would allow me to add an MP4 file, but for the M4A file, it would say it was dimmed, you know, unavailable. And so I'm thinking it's not supported. And I'm like, that just doesn't make sense to me. It's like a related, you know, codec. And I wrote to voice stream support um, and both Winston and um, Sandra, who also does support, they, they both got back to me very quickly. And we figured um, because they were like, it does support. Can you please send us the, you know, file to troubleshoot? And once I explained how I was trying to get them in, so we uh, we figured out the problem is that there's um, a bug in the file browser, the internal one, that it doesn't allow the import of the M4A files. So the workaround, if you'd like to play those now, is to use the actual iOS files app and you select your, uh, you go over to your M4A file and you uh, flick up and down in your uh, rotor actions, you go to share and then you select more and voice stream uh, reader and it will indeed load the M4A file and play it just like this they said. Me. Um, uh, just one sec. And they, they did let me know that that is on the radar. They said, thanks for bringing it to our attention and we'll fix it in the next um, update. So hopefully that will happen. All right, go ahead, Herbie. So another workaround, which might be even more useful if you have multiple M4A files is if you zip them up and import that to voice stream, either by the file browser or putting it in the uh, loader folder which a real quick tip, if you have iCloud Drive on either of your uh, systems on a computer, Windows and Mac, there's a folder called Reader and then Loader, and any file you put in there will appear on your voice stream. If, you're, if you have Cloud Sync turned on, that is. If you don't have it turned on, then that won't help. But it will see them for a, a, a files that are in a zip format, and because uh, I've had no problems that way. So I just thought I'd mention that as well. All right, very cool. Thank you for that. 
So yes, until, well, I mean, we can always use those as well, but um, hopefully the fi- the internal file browser, that will be fixed as well. But, yeah, um, definitely. I, yeah, I didn't but, even know that was a bug because I've never used the internal file yeah. browser for <laughs> yeah. individual audio files. So sure, well. sure. So very good. But um, so yes, voice stream does play ham forays. So all right. Who would like to go ahead, David? Um, before we, uh, you were mentioning the widgets on the on the lock screen, and I I didn't hear a lot about that as a new feature. But how do you get those onto the lock screen? I looked at directions that says you're supposed to like tap and hold, but I think that's for um, non voiceover uh, users. Uh, like tap and hold on a blank part of the home of the lock screen, and then it should give you like a customize. Yeah, yeah. So but I, I'm not getting that, and I. And I this is Shree. Right, go ahead, Shree. Yeah, <clears throat> just so I'm clear. So, David, you're talking about putting widgets on the lock screen? Yeah. So you would go to settings, go to wallpaper, and then one of the options is uh, widgets for uh, widgets for lock screen. Oh, it's and, a wallpaper. Uh, yeah, and then basically when you're presented with these widgets, VoiceOver is going to read it. I believe it is. I have to go look at my notes here. Either it's going to read it as a circle or triangle i could be wrong with that i'll have oh, to double check rect- it is it a rectangle or something yeah Maybe it's a rectangle. To too. and what that what that means is in the lock screen you have up to four areas that you can put a, a widget in a circle represents uh one section a rectangle means two sections so a total of it has to equal to four so you could have four circles or two rectangles or whatever the the the, uh, the equation it adds to four. So like, for example, I have the reminder, the basic battery and the basic weather to give me four total, but you'll find in the wallpaper. Okay, so thank you. Your... Oh, go ahead, David, sorry. Oh, no, thanks, I'll, I'll check that out. Very good. And I know they did improve this from iOS uh, 16.0, but I know as well there is an Apple Viz podcast, which is what I did in 16.0. I followed along um, because it wasn't terribly intuitive. So I'm glad to hear that that's improved. And actually, Shri, so do you know we were talking earlier, right, about the reminders not reliably appearing in notifications uh, center? Do they appear nicely in your lock screen widget does it actually tell you the upcoming reminder or does it just say like one upcoming reminder you know does it give you the title of what it is it does give me the title oh, like for there's... example it told me that i had the monday night buzz call today it has <laughs> it has my today's reminder it has remi- tomorrow's reminder in there now okay. keep in mind see some of these widgets have the circle or the triangle the rectangle the rectangle yeah so the more the rectangle is going to give you more information than the circle will true so yeah. that's you have to keep in mind so depending on what widget you put in place there too sure very um, good point okay i think what we'll do is um on the december cafe i think i will do as part of um and i'm I haven't quite figured it out yet but i might do ios 16.1 and that's one of those things that i was going to tell how to set up a widget on the lock screen Oh, very good. Well, there we go then for, so David, look out for the December cafe <laughs> and, um, and sure you're talking about, this is for the reminders widget, right? Not the calendar widget. You're right. The yeah. reminders oh, widget. Reminder. Okay. See, I have to, yeah, because, because uh, I'm finding it too, even with just calendar. I mean, yeah, just the notifications don't reliably say things. So I think I need, I think I maybe need to make a couple of lock screens so I can it, more, more reliably. It, it, and I did want to make one other comment about um, why things are in the bottom of the screen versus sure. they used to be in the top it's just and this may not be a for blind users but from a, a visual and the use of the phone especially those larger phones it's much more easy because the tendency is our fingers are towards the bottom of the screen majority of the time and so that it makes it much easier and quicker for them to react to the notification when they're in the bottom because their fingers are already in the bottom of the screen that makes sense. Sorry about that. I had to sneeze. That does make sense. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you for that. Yeah, that just goes to show the different, you know, perspectives and um, experiences. I, I never would have thought of that <laughs> because like you said, with voiceover, um, yeah, it doesn't necessarily tend to be the case. All right. Very good. Well, with uh, oh, Marie, Maria. Yes. Uh, uh, this is, who, this is Jerry. This is yes. Jerry from Vermont. 
Yes, I, go ahead, I had Jim. a quick, quick question on this widget thing. Sure. Uh, sighted people don't understand widgets for some reason. Are they available for people with sight too? Oh, yes. This is Shree. Yeah, go ahead, Shree. It is it's really meant for sighted people because a widget just pro provides a lot of information in one app. Right. Um, so it's really what voiceover is doing is just interpreting everything that's on that screen as it relates to the widget. It's just reading it to us. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's one of the, the benefits of voiceover is the fact that it just reads whatever is on that screen or the focus of that element. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Shree. Yeah. They're, de they're designed for sighted folks to just kind of get a with a quick glance, you know, get some a uh, particular piece of information so um for sure all right well this is just that? this is pete go ahead pete real quick maria sure uh jerry they're just not real cognizant of what's going on in the world around them <gasps> those sighted folks or they're not familiar with the terminology yeah, that's right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was wondering if you heard me. It was a joke. <laughs> this is Shree. All right, go ahead, Shree. I just have a question. Go I don't have a question. Um, I just noticed on my Zoom right now, that I'm using a wired headset, and the mute button is not toggling between mute and unmute. I'm just hearing an audible alert. Is that? Oh. Is that? Is anyone else experiencing this, or is it just a fluke on my phone right now? But hmm. I can't tell when I'm muted or unmuted because it just says the same thing. Interesting. This is Jody. All Hang right. On. I think we need to. Can we come back to that? Sure. Okay. Oh, yes. It's look at that. Look at the time. Yeah, yes, Sunday. Exactly. It's time for the halftime show. Right. Okay. And uh, we're hearing like a lot of dinging and whatever. So try to control everybody's background noise. Okay. So here we go. We are at the midpoint. Thank you, Maria, for that fun filled first half. All right. Anybody who didn't have a chance to say hello? Uh, tell us who you are and where you're from. We'd love to hear from you. Nikki, San Francisco. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Vanessa from Georgia. Hey, Vanessa. Welcome. Angelo in Ottawa. Hey, you're back. Welcome. This is Herbie in Houston, and I fixed the door uh, doorbell sound in Zoom. Somehow that oh. had gotten enabled. So. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. All right, who's next? Sharon from Sharon. New York. Oh. Okay, Sharon and Kathy welcome. from Tulsa. Kathy, welcome. And somebody Shree else. from Virginia. Shree, welcome. Debbie Dethridge from Kentucky. Vermont. All right, Sorry. Debbie, welcome. And Jerry, welcome. Who else? Marvin from Chicago. Hey, Marvin, welcome. Anybody else want to say hello? This is Joe from Norman, Oklahoma. Hello, Joe. Welcome back. All right. Okay, last call. Okay, so we know what's coming. So the big reveal, time to find out what movie we're going to be watching on Friday night at the virtual movies. And with those inscrutable clues is the ver our very own iBug guy. iBug guy, I don't even know what to say. iBug guy, are you out there? Oh, I, I can't believe that. Coming to your rescue, I was gonna today. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, Astros. We are ready. Yeah, Astros rock. <laughs> Don't tell me. All right. Me. We okay. got a movie coming up this Friday. Same yes. time as usual, 7.30 p.m. for the pre-movie social. The movie will start around 8 and stick around afterwards for discussion and trivia of the movie. So what is our movie? We're going to find out this evening what the movie will be. We've got some clues. 
but I need to give you the rules. We have rules for our game of guessing the movie. First and foremost, say your name, wait to be recognized then you may guess the title. We don't need storylines or actors or anything else, just the title. Second, we have, you get one guess per clue and five guesses total. All right. So hang on to your hats and get ready. Oh, by the way, our clues this week were generously provided by Aaron Judge. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, here we go for clue number one. Yes. Oh, wait, wait, what are we doing? What is this segment called? Oh. We don't. We, we're we're coming up with a new title, and it has not been revealed yet. Oh, whatever. Okay, go on. All right. What are we doing? Oh, clue number one. I already said that. Okay, hurry up. Our film this week. It. <laughs> <coughs> Oh my gosh, hurry up. <coughs> okay, our film this week is set in the Middle East. Middle East. Middle East. Oh. Miss Kathy. Oh, Kathy. Uh, what about the kite runners? The kite runners very good guess i never heard of it it was, it was a book i i assume it was made into a movie i don't know for sure i heard of it how do you know it's a good guess all right all right here we go anybody Mr. else brad? oh brad argo argo is that like fargo no not really Argo. Nothing at all like Fargo. Nothing at all like Fargo. <laughs> I, I don't know that I've heard of that one either, but we'll check. You never it. heard of Argo? You not heard of it? I, I think it got an Argo. Oscar or something. I've heard of Argon. Nope. Argon. All right, never heard of like Kyle Argon, Myers? but without the N. Oh, Argo. Okay, let me check with the judges. Like Argo, never mind. Said, this is straight. Oh, he said Argo. He's consulting with the judges. I know. A R G O. Not Fargo. Fargo. Bell. <laughs> Who are these judges? I don't know. All right, our judges have made a ruling. And Brad is absolutely correct. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> Way to go, Brad. Good job, Brad. Brad. <laughs> oh, my God. I Woo. saved us. Wow. You did. Saved us to four more clues. <laughs> oh, I, poor Nikki Aaron. has a question. We will not get to read the rest of Aaron's clues, unfortunately. All right, Nikki, Nikki has a quick question. Early, All right, early quick early question from Nikki. Um, were you coughing to give a clue to the film because there's a lot of fire in it, or do you have a cold? Uh, That's no a sound cold. effect. Okay, move on. No cold, no move cold. on. Okay. All right. Good. We are moving okay. I'm glad on. because you sounded terrible. <laughs> Thank Since you. Brad guessed it on the first, first, first clue this week. That a grand it's slam. something that has not happened in over a year. Can no you way. believe it? Brad no. has never guessed a movie on the first clue. Yes, I did. 
All right, Brad has West. just a movie once on the first clue. Oh my God, move on. Maybe twice. Twice. Johnny, what are we at for our winner tonight? All right, I thought we'd never ask, and here we go, yeah, Brad. Okay. This is not going to fit in your garage. <laughs> Neither did the train engine or the 58 DeSoto for that matter. Well, here you go. You're going to have your very own Hollywood sign. <laughs> there we go. All right. In disrepair, because that is how it was at the time of this movie. Subsequent to this, uh, in 1979, actually, each people, famous celebrities contributed, nine celebrities contributed $28,000 for each letter. So nine times 28,000. And we know that I can't do that. So we're not going to even go there. Don't even think about it, Pete. I already beat you to it. Okay. So anyway, so there you go, Brad. You're going to have your own disrepaired Hollywood sign in and your that front is yard. is when this movie is set. So and that cool. is 252000 all right, very good. Okay, with that, we will say good night to Mr. McCullough. Mr. McCullough, say good night. Wait, I got this movie, <sighs> as Brad said, won three Oscars, including I don't remember which Oscars, but anyway, it's a good movie. Join us, starring Ben Affleck. Yeah, and it was released in 2012. It's not an old movie, John, Sonia. John Goodman, no, but it's and set some in 1979. Other people's. Ah. So join us for that on this Friday. And I am going to depart this lovely place. All right, great song. And there he goes. Okay. Now we're going to have our iBug Bites segment. And then after that, we'll return to our questions. So be thinking all those people that didn't get to ask a question, it will be your turn, I promise. All right, here we go. Maria, Maria, Maria. All right. Hello again. Oh, so, long time. Where have you been? <laughs> pretty good. How about you? <laughs> long time, no talk. Oh, I know, I know. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> So I'm going to be talking about a fairly recent, I think, voiceover feature. I, I'm, the time, the versions just blur. Uh, I forget if this is a new in iOS 16 or when it started, but this is the ability to explore a photo. So we know that when we uh, navigate, like say, uh, I mean, and it can happen in various places where you encounter a photo, like in an email, or if you've opened one um on your in a social media that's you know recognized as a separate object or of course here in your photos um so we know that usually when we uh you know swipe over to flick over to them uh voiceover will tell us if we have our image recognition on it'll give us some kind of description um and if we do a three finger triple tap we will get uh that as well um, or excuse me, a three finger tap, my goodness, <laughs> um, three finger single tap, um, we will get uh, a description as well. Um, but you can get a more uh, detailed view of the objects in a photo by using this explore mode. Uh, and so to show you that I'm in my photos app, and I'm going to move to a photo in my library. Live photo, August 26th, shared, saved. A child sitting next to a dog on a rug. And that's a very interesting description. Uh, well, we will, we will find out the accuracy of that in a second. So how to explore the photo. Um, there are a couple of ways. The way I usually like to enter into it is um, on the actions rotor, which is, of course, in focus. Usually when actions are available, there is an if I flick down explore image explore image options so if we double tap image explorer heading 
And here we are in the image explorer. Now you are able to explore by touch and find out about objects in relation to what you're touching. But I have found that sometimes I am, uh, I, I miss objects when, when I do that. I don't know if I'm just not going in a straight line or what is happening. So I'm just going to be flicking to the right so that we can hear everything. So if I just do that. Done button. So this is your done button, how you get out of there in the upper right hand corner. Image heading. This is something. Marie, could you Tumblr. raise your volume Image. a little bit? Oh, uh, sorry. Could you raise your volume just a oh, little bit? Please? Let me done button. Image heading. Much All better. Right. Thank oh, you. good. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So if we flick now to the right here. Sofa near top left edge. K nine near left edge. K nine. Oh, how regal. Sofa centered. Sofa near top left edge. K9, near bottom right edge. Two K9s. If you remember, there was one that said uh, the left edge. And now we have one here at the uh, bottom right edge as well. Sofa, near top edge. Clearly, there's a sofa in this picture. Slight right profile of a person's face with wavy brown hair, laughing, near top edge. Who knows who that person is? Sofa, near top right edge. Image description. Heading. And so as you can tell there, as I was flicking around, it did kind of take me to all of the corners. Um, it worked its way uh, around and told me about all these objects uh, that it uh, saw. And if we keep going here, you'll get the image description that we heard when I flicked to this photo. The child sitting next to a dog on a rug. Scenes. Heading. Adult. Living room. Sofa. Textile. Wood processed. Eight. Heading. August time heading to orientation heading portrait portrait and and there that is what we have in the explorer and so um you can tell that this really gives you um a better sense between the quick you know Im image description and this explore you do get a better sense of what's in the photo and i can uh tell you um so that photo, what it was saying about living room and textile and wood and such. So it's actually, that was pretty accurate. So I took that in, um, that was uh, in my parents' house. I was sitting on a floor. I was sitting on a rug, um, but there was some parquet near me. I was kind of like on the edge of a rug and you, uh, the, the sofa, you're, um, I, I don't remember if both of them, but my parents have like two couches that are across from each other. So I don't know if only one of them or if both of them were um captured in the picture. Um, and so it wasn't a living room. And um, it, you know, interesting, you could tell there <laughs> it referred to me as a child at one point in the general image description, but then in the explorer, it um talked about uh, you know, person with wavy brown hair laughing and I, I was smiling and most importantly there were the two canines and those are my two ladies my uh my working and my retired guides my two chocolate labs and um one was basically on, on either side of me and I was um sitting and they were sitting and I was hugging them so that was that picture so um that is uh, image exploration and, um, you know, just another way of hopefully uh, allowing you to more independently kind of to jog your memory or for you to know what a certain picture on your phone is. So with that, any questions? This is Pete. Go ahead, Pete. So just to review, uh, Maria, you you touched on the photo Yes. And then what did you do? Flick up into the action for the actions rotor? First? Yes, I had, I had flicked down, but yeah, of course you can go in either direction. Yeah. So um, that's and your I've... first step after touching the photo. And then um, it will give you a general description, which was your child on the floor with the canine. And luckily you were not the canine, I guess. <laughs> I know. Imagine that. Um, that's flattering, though, that you were referred to as the child i guess that's flattering but um so then you flicked in uh right left up down 
<laughs> yeah, I basically just flicked uh to the left and right. I didn't even go up or down. I just oh, literally okay. flicked, yeah, left and right. And it kind of took me around. Um, if you remember, it kind of started at the, the left and then it I think it was saying sofa because it, in the center because it was picking up. I think it picked right. up a decent amount of that couch. So then once it got through that, it told me the left hand canine, and then it told me about some more sofa, and then the right hand, and then we were back yeah. to the sofa. So so yeah, it kind cool. of uh, circled itself around. And see, as you can tell too, like the description, right? It only mentioned one pupper, and then yeah. we went into the exploration, and we found out there were two. Um. So yeah, very and, cool. It, yeah, and it also gave the more accurate the weight, you know, the brown hair and the fact that you know, laughing, I, I definitely was smiling, and you know, so yeah, it's a neat. Thing. Okay, thanks. Yep. This was Shri. Go on, Shri. Do you think this could help, like when you crop a picture, figuring out what you're cutting out at the edges? Oh, that is an interesting thought. Um. It might be able to. I've never tried that scenario, but I mean, presumably if you cut something out, it would no longer, you know, be there when you were exploring, like the object would go away. But it, I mean, to me, it still seems like a good amount of guesswork if you're not able to, you know, kind of see it. But um, I, I mean, I would imagine that it, it's going to dynamically, you know, update and uh, retrieve what's in the in the image. So um it could be a tool in the toolbox, but I would definitely still advise getting sighted help to make sure it looks good. You know, you haven't cut off half of something. Yeah, go so ahead. this picture, should we trust the the young lady or should we tr trust the, the baby as the actual image on the picture? <laughs> you should trust the uh, person with the wavy brown hair that's laughing as the picture. <laughs> um, hey, thank yeah, you. <laughs> it's it, you know sometimes you wonder too with the image uh because right it didn't mention um i don't think it meant because it, it mentioned the, the the uh explore image mentioned like the textile and the the hardwood in the living room right but the image description um mentioned about the rug and like i said i was sitting kind of like on the edge of the rug so i feel like in some ways i guess both of them can give you useful information you have to kind of um I guess, you know, kind of take it all in and, and kind of decide which seems more, um, you know, appropriate or like more relevant to you. If you have, you know, some familiarity with a picture, it might jog your, uh, um, your, your kind of memory of it. But, um, but yeah, and even the scene, right. It said like adult and, um, you know, so, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to, I guess, say, you know, every single time, trust this one more than this one. But, you know, together, hopefully they give you a, a useful kind of composite. This is Terry. All right, go ahead, Terry. I'm trying to figure out um, or understand. That's the word I want. I'm trying to understand the difference between the first thing that it described when it didn't describe it as accurately versus the second thing, I guess, when you were in Explore that described it more accurately because it's the same picture. Right. But what's, what is the first thing telling you versus the, why is one more accurate than the other, I guess, is my question. Right, right. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't, if I had to guess, I think it's just like a different process that it's maybe doing some different type of, you know, artificial intelligence um, on one versus the other, because like the first one is just kind of a more surface like image description, whereas it's, it's kind of a similar to thing if you have like, you know, the recognition of, um, of text in in images if you you know flick over to one that has some text it might give you something but then if you actually go into it and select the detect text you know and actually do the dedicated process for detecting text you'll most likely get more detail when you do that so yeah. i think it's kind of an analogous thing like it's actually doing some more processing to be able to give you the location of different objects and i mean it's clearly doing a few different things if it gives me that you know the, the objects and then it gives the scene description and such so it's clearly doing a bit more processing to give me the greater detail Got it. Okay, thanks. That's really a cool feature. And yeah. that's just in 16 or is it odd? Because I have Explore and I forget what the other thing is if you 
flick up or down. So I think it might oh, even be available okay. in 15. Yeah, it definitely could be. I'm trying to, I don't know if anyone knows off the top of their head. I'm trying to, I just did a quick Google search for voiceover explore image. And um, of course I'm getting this, uh, you know, an <laughs> Apple article. It's just like a general thing, um, but it's not, it, it might, if I click into it, um, it might tell me the description and such. Oh, but this, is Sonia. Uh, this article is from November of 21 from this make use of. So I don't know. It seems like it's fairly new. Go ahead, Sonia. I was just going to say this feature comes in real handy. I mean, in a lot of places, but like, uh, for example, Facebook, you know, people are always fitting pictures. And before we used to have the you know, you're in the picture with Joe, you know, and all that. And then they got rid of that. So um, we get some more context. And um, sometimes it'll tell you uh, kind of like what you were showing. It, it tells you, you know, people are in the foreground and the background. I mean, so it's uh, pretty, pretty cool how it gives you a sense of how they are on the I mean, it's, I was thinking of that other app that David used to talk about. I think it was Be Specular, or there was one that, you know, you could move your finger around and see where everybody was or everything was in the picture. Remember that? There was an app. I don't remember. I thought it was Be Specular. Anyway, all right, I digress, but okay, thank you. This is Shree. Okay, I go ahead, Shree. What phone do you have? I have a 14 Pro. So I'm wondering, <clears throat> and I... I could be wrong, but I suspect you're getting more information because you have a phone that does more algorithm processing than because I when I compared my eight plus to my twelve uh -huh. on an image, my twelve was giving me much more information than the eight. Oh, so I'm suspecting that your fourteen. Uh, it'd be a good test if you test your SC versus this. To yeah, see. I will have to do that. I have a feeling why you got so much more detail is the fact that you have a fourteen. Yeah, that may very well be because I know too, because you have the, um, what is it like the image recognition, right? Isn't even fully available. Is it like, was, was mm -hmm. what was the minimum, like the 10 or something for that? I, I forget 11. now. So. 11? 11. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. So that, yeah, that definitely would fit, um, you know, with that. So that was this Herbie. Right, we gotta move on okay one more thing all right i think we heard herbie and then brad yeah. no i was yeah. just gonna say don't think i mean there's a little bit of difference of processing power between the 12 and the 14 but is yours the 14 pro or the 14 pro max uh, no or mine's is the 14 pro but no um shri was comparing an, an 8 to a 12. right and i was saying i think comparing an 8 to a 12 is different comparing a 12 to a 14 is what i was trying to say so ah uh, uh-huh so that could, I mean, it may, I mean, that's worth testing for sure, but it may, you know, the, like the eight was definitely, you know, that is two different leaps there. So, yeah. And then I think Brad, and then we can return it to Sandhya. Maybe I imagine that. Hello, I thought I heard Oh, that. this is Brad. Oh, there, yeah. Go ahead. No, I think the, um, the, the, the voice recognition feature really got, Apparently it does work on an eight, but I believe a lot of things started with the 10 R. Ah, okay. It was the processor that was in the mm -hmm. 10 R, 10 S series. Okay, very good. So that would explain that. All right, we'll have fun exploring your images then. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Sandhya. Thank you, Maria. Okay, all right, everybody. We are now back to our scheduling program, regularly scheduled program. Somebody that has not had a turn, we'd love to hear from you. Please go ahead, say your name and- This is want... Jody. Go ahead, Jody. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify what I was describing uh, to Shri before uh, the break. And the Zoom now has seven buttons at the bottom of the screen and only six of them are displayed at once. So if you move, if you swipe right and move all the way to the far right, you're gonna go to the more button and then that will exclude the mute button. And if you want to go back to the mute button, you have to keep swiping left till you get to the, you know, to the, till it moves into view. So basically there's seven buttons, but only six of them appear on the screen at once. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you, Jody. All right, who's next? This is Marty. Hang on, Marty. Let's just see if anybody else has it, had a turn and then we'll come back. Okay, anybody else that totally didn't have a turn yet really like to hear from you i know there's people 
All right. Nobody? This right. is Shree. Uh, hang on, Shree. You've had a turn, too. Hang on. Anybody else? Nobody. All right. Go, Barney. Um, in, the, in Bluetooth settings for the AirPods Pro, Pro 2, and Max, uh, they're the ones that I have. Um, there used to be an item where it said um, when last connected, um, sorry about the clock, uh -huh. when last, you can, you can, you come back in just a second. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Shri, what's your clock? We'll come back to Barty after his clocks are done. Well, my clock's done. Okay, go ahead. Um, it used to be an item that said you can either connect to this device automatically or when last connected um that that item seems to be gone you know from the bluetooth settings okay for this those is herbie devices. all right go herbie it is there it is labeled something a little bit differently but it's the same idea and then for I'd, I'd have to go actually look but it is still there it just has a slightly different label because that threw me off last week so it but it is there okay i'll have to look for it because i i looked for it and i you know didn't even see anything similar you know in any of the labels but if if you find it let me know yep well hang tight i'll tell you in a couple minutes thanks okay thank you herbie and marty okay now Shree. um i was just gonna say my what i reported prior to the halftime it's working now it's somehow the unmute is working maybe it was michael's cough cleared it up yeah, on my end probably yeah, cleared up a lot of things okay a few hairballs came out okay all right who's next jerry gary what are you doing go ahead uh, i just had uh, two comments one for Sri. he said i believe it was last week yeah he had a question if other people were hearing Siri or when it's talking back it giving a different pitch mine does that too but it basically only does it when I listen to it say if you write an email and there's a question it'll do it at the end of the question it'll uh, like if you ask a question at the end it'll uh, have a higher pitch uh -huh. and then the second one was uh, they were I, I've heard it several times where they put links into contacts like the Zoom meeting. For me, I find it's a lot simpler just opening it in Safari once, then tap share at the bottom. If you can't find it, you just got to scroll to the top, tap share at the bottom and save it to your homepage. That way you never have to open contacts or anything. You just hit that uh, link and it takes you directly into the Zoom meet. Yeah, that is definitely, you know, that's a great solution. Yeah, we talk about that a lot, you know, how to save our on Zoom link. So there are different ways and uh, we've talked about creating a contact and putting the Zoom link in the URL and uh, the other option is a great option as well, putting it on your uh, screen. I also have a quick question. Is this number three now? <laughs> yes. No, that's number one. The others were comments. Oh, okay. Got it. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know what it is, but sometimes it looks like uh, it happens once or twice a week when it just happens out of nowhere. Say I go to WhatsApp or to my messages, it'll say messages, and then it says something else like container or something like that. It's just weird. If I turn off the phone, turn it back on, it uh, it goes away. I'm wondering if anybody else is having that issue. And okay. if I uh, actually I noticed, is that new to iOS 16? When pressing the side button and the volume up button to shut it down, if I shut it down, it'll give me a tone, which yeah. it never did before. Yeah, that's a new feature. 16. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So question about the word container coming up. Uh, when does it come up again? It's you... just anytime when you like, it'll just pop up when you go to the apps 
it'll say the app name, then it'll say container. Sometimes it says okay. something else. I don't exactly okay. know off the top of my head what it is. It's on your iPhone. Okay. Correct. This is Brad. This is Brad. Yeah, containers are like sections on the screen or areas or I don't know what other synonym to use for them. Um, it's really more applicable on an iPad, but we do find it on... It's an option that can be in your rotor on an iPhone as well. Um, it's in there by default. I've turned mine off because I don't find it all that useful. However, some people might. Um, an example of a container, for example, on your home screen, the uh, status bar would be a container. The main area of uh, where the icons are, are located in your home screen would be a container. And the dock at the bottom of the screen would be another container. I mean, I find it much simpler just to put my finger on these areas. But um, um, well, on, an see, iPad, uh, on an yeah. iPad, for example, if you're in mail, the mail mailbox folder list is on the left-hand side. That would be a container and, or, or the, the contents of the, of the folder, like the inbox. And then you have a mail item selected that shows up over on the right if you're in la uh, landscape view. And those two are separate containers. So that's just an example. Yeah, so just a region Jerry, of, yeah, go ahead, Jerry, go ahead. It's, it's not, uh, I don't think it's that. It's, uh, I've heard somebody else say it too. It's like, say if I even, I might say I'm in the dock. If I switch, I have phone, Safari, messages and WhatsApp in the dock. If I swipe from one to the other, it'll say messages and then it'll say containers, container. Or sometimes I've heard it said yeah. here too, it'll say celestial body other or well, something like that. This is Brett. All I can do say is it must be telling you you're in a container. I don't know. I've always had mine turned off because I haven't found it useful on, a, on an iPhone. And if it's bothering you, I would suggest you go into um accessibility then voiceover look for um rotor and you can open that up and then you can turn on and off different things that you want or don't want in your rotor and you can just yes. get rid of containers and then you probably won't hear that anymore this is herbie yes all right hopefully that will help okay quickly herbie and then we'll all right um two quick things and then an actual interesting question um First of all, another area where you might use containers is if you want to use the app library that you do need containers for navigating and to see the cafe we did on that last year and we're getting some kind of background noise. Um, also, Marty, to answer your question, you go on the uh, AirPods Max settings and I would imagine it's the way for the Pro 2. There's now a button that, that says um, when last on iPhone or whatever. So if you double tap that button, you'll see the two different options in there. Remember last device, you know, remember current device or blah, blah, blah. You'll get the idea when you double tap that button, when you swipe down on more info, you know, on the thing and keep swiping right, you'll see a button that contains those two different options. And then you actually real quick jogged a question that i've been meaning to ask has anybody used the facial surround sound focus with the airpods and do you notice any difference with it i'm done okay anybody with facial surround sound on i don't think so Harvey. Sorry, repeat repeat oh. the question so you yeah. know now, so basically in the AirPods, this is Herbie, in the yeah. AirPods Max, they have the, the, this thing now where you can have it scan your face and do a personalized um, surround sound type thing now. And um, I was trying to experiment it with the other week and I was having issues actually with the camera and, you know, it not moving beyond a certain point, but I was just wondering if anybody else has actually played with it and if they've noticed a difference because it's supposed to now do the head tracking based on your face dimensions or whatever and you know it's just this is marty hey marty um the facial thing i think i tried it and it actually wouldn't invoke it because i have an iphone 8 
said not available on this iPhone. Now the head tracking, I do have that turned on. And, and that's kind of, I don't want to say weird, but if you're walking around the room and like you're turning, um, the, the, the sound like, yeah, well, actually, yeah I had that on. And, and, yeah. so, and, and then I, what I noticed is when I sit down, um, in about 10 seconds, um, the sound, I guess, orients like normally. Yes. Yeah. But they're supposed to now have this new thing where it can be based on the dimensions of your face. And it was yeah, just I think that's newer phone. That. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think I heard Brad. Brad, did you say something? No. Okay. This Sorry. is Brad. Yeah. Yes. I was going to say my experience is the same as Herbie's. I've tried to enable this feature and I get in just beginning the process and I get to where it tells me to look, look down and to the left. Yes. And I get no farther than that. And I tried you that on my 12 Pro okay, hey, and then again on my 14 Pro and with different versions of 16. And I've never been able to get past that. So I gave up. All right. Look down. Could be a song. Yeah. All right. Very. This is Dave. Brad. Go, David. Well, this is a new topic. I don't know if we're Good. done with the. Yeah, we're done with that. Go ahead. Okay. Well, um, a few months back, I remember I called in. I started having this weird problem on my um, phone, especially in the messages app where it would not show me the um, text box at the bottom, you know, to do the, yeah. the uh -huh. and I'm, you know, I discovered a workaround. I kind of drag my finger around the bottom and f finally find that text box. But it was always like, almost like underneath another, like um, bar uh, navigation cut bar. So <clears throat> I just kind of lived with it for several months, you know, and looked up, you know, tried to find um, if anyone else had experienced that. And then I got I'm on a new phone the other day and I ported over my settings from the old phone. I thought, well, maybe the new phone will not have that problem, but of course it did. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so then I reset the iPhone 14, you know, with the reset settings, w went back to default and the problem went away. Then I checked it <clears throat> against my old phone and I discovered there's this uh, setting under voice server called navigation style. I don't know if anyone's ever used that. Uh, there's a choice of flat or group. Right. And flat, I guess, is the default. But on my um, old phone, it had been set to group. Oh. And that, well, I don't know what, what benefit that has, but it, it messed up a lot of, especially uh, like messages. Uh, Facebook, sometimes the buttons are kind of weirdly placed you have to find uh, search around to find stuff and other things and then put like this nav bar thing at the top of every app uh, i didn't this little button that said nav bar but you couldn't tap on it it was like just a, oh, right. a little element or something i there's a lot of weird kind of things <clears throat> and um so that's just a word to um I guess a cautionary tale there. If, if you pro tip, right? Uh, pro tip. I don't know. I, I mean, does anyone know what navigation style is? Or yeah, some we, benefit we've to that? Talked or about it a couple of times. I bet she's going to working some apps and not others, or what? What's the deal? Go ahead, Shri. Oh, um, this is Shri. Before I answer that, David, what phone did you have prior? I was a 10 10 R. <clears throat> okay. Um. Hmm. My understanding between it. What a flat and group is, like you said, flat was there prior. It's just basically when you're swiping, going from left to right down the screen. A group is kind of copies what the Mac does, where you have to interact and stop interacting. So if you're in the toolbar, you would interact, then you swipe right, then you'd be focused just on the toolbar. And then if you want to get away from the toolbar, you want to go below the toolbar, then you would stop interacting. Um, by And the way you interact is you swipe right with two fingers or swipe left with two fingers to stop interacting. And the, the experience is that you kind of working like how your the Mac works when you're navigating on the screen. So it's basically like groups of elements are put together. Yeah. And so you're, but is there any benefit to navigating that way? Except it's more like the Mac or, I mean, I, 
I'm not going to play true. with it too much, but I, it, it annoyed the hell out of me. But. <laughs> Tell mm. us. Go ahead, Shri. I, I think, you know, where I've seen it, where it makes some sense is like in the mail app. Uh, if you're trying to be uh, not going, you know, jumping between the two sections, if you want to just focus on the section, I can see it. Uh, but personally, I, 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 you know, I'm so used to using the old method that I've, you know, basically took that out. Okay. All right. Any other comments on groups or flat versus group? Pete. Pete. Do a three finger swipe up, a scroll up gesture, and it will kind of pull it out from under that. I think it kind of separates the group or has the same effect of an uninteracting command. Okay. All right. Well, David, we hope you are happy now. Happy camper. Congratulations on your new phone. Okay, very good. This is Shree. Go ahead. So Pete, does it actually say it's, uh, does voiceover say that it stops when you do that? Or, because I'm assuming that's stop interacting, correct? Yeah, that would, it, it's kind of like if, if in the past without respect to groups or, or that effect or that um, um, feature or that kind of a layout, it's kind of like if you were going down a screen and you're swiping down a long list or a Safari page, for example, uh, and you would get to the end of the list and the items. But if you did a three finger scroll up, it would extend that list. There's more there left um, that's not able to fit onto the screen. So I think it's that's where that come. I heard somebody mention it in one of the tech groups um somewhere and i think that the the scroll up feature or gesture kind of pulls the top part out of the uh from you know from being layered over by the bottom part so i don't know what it says i've never tried it i've not had that and i've never set my uh navigation to groups i'm familiar with how it works of course on the mac but not on the phone okay very good Thank you guys. All right, who's next? New questions. Somebody new that hasn't had a turn. New issue, please, anybody? Okay, no questions from the crowd, huh? Does that mean um, you have one? I will if I have nobody else asking the question. I want to make sure nobody else, everybody has a turn. Some people, we just get carried away here. Okay. Let me think of one real quick. Sorry? I was going to try to think of one real quick. Okay, well, <laughs> go ahead. All right, no, I'm, here's I'm my kidding. question. I have my new phone, and um, I it's telling me, it says, uh, I, I set up my notification, I checked that, and it says zero new messages. But then when I go into the messages app or the mail app, then it's like, oh, 53 unread email. So, uh, you know, what what is going on? I, I, it's, I'm pretty sure I, I thought I resolved it by checking the notifications, but something else is going on. Any thoughts? Why does it say, I would think it would say 53 unread messages, but it says zero new messages, something like that. But then when I get into the app, it'll, and then I go into the toolbar, it says 53 unread. Just seems a little inconsistent. So is Brad. Brad. Which mailbox are you in? Uh, just the main inbox. I have another box called unread. Yeah, I know. I have that And that too. might tell me how many, you know, unread or Mine says unread, not new messages. Okay, but like when you're on your main home screen and you're at the dock oh. and the dock says, it, there's two different places that it, I'm getting different information. I would think it would be the same. So when, and I'm you're, when, you, when you okay. put, I'm sorry. Oh, Brad, yep. When you put focus on the mail right. app icon. In the dock. In the dock. It says zero messages. But then I go into the mail app and then under the toolbar tab at the bottom, 
It'll say 53 unread. Um, I might go into my notifications yep. for mail and find that item that says, I know, uh, what's it say? Something like uh, app icon um, badge, yeah. badge right. app, ic right, app right. icon badge, mm -hmm. toggle it off and back on again and see if that clears it and straightens okay. it out. Because that's what that is. It's that little uh, yeah. number. It's like in the upper right corner of the of the icon. There's like a little number there. Well, and I, you I, might want to turn that off and then turn it back on. Okay, because I tried before the call, I checked it. And I, it's like, I think it says like announce something, announce uh, or some word announce in there. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, okay. Have to I'll go look at toggle it, again, it but, uh, to Yeah, it toggle it off, toggle it back on, see if that does anything. Okay, somebody else is about to say something. Yeah, this is Greg. Greg. Yeah, uh, yeah, Brad, what, what you're suggesting, I'll try. I'm, I'm having the same issue oh, that good. Sandy is having. Yeah, well, and it, it could be, I think we both have 14 pros, so it could be something with 14 pros. I figured it was just a software thing. Yeah, well, I guess it won't matter. Pro, Pro Max, whatever. So. Well, this is Pete. I've got a 13, and I have the same issue. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. So, okay. Sorry, Greg. <laughs> doesn't matter about the phone. It's just a software thing. Okay. Very good. All right. Who's this next? Is Shree. Go, Shree. I have a 12 Pro Max, and I don't have that problem. Might we want to downgrade. We don't really care about your 12 Pro Max, Shree. Okay. <laughs> okay. See, that's, 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 what, that's what you get for saying that. I know. You get, you get bad information. Yeah, bad information. All right. Who's next? New question, new problem. Oh, another new thing I observed. Uh, they're, you know, is filling out Facebook and wishing somebody happy birthday and now when you you know it says joe has a birthday and then you go in and now there's a quick way it says right on their timeline i'm like hallelujah because there was always this i don't know i always had trouble uh as to where you could write and when you could po you know anyway so it clearly says right on their timeline now so just letting people know in case, in case anybody wants to do that all right Who's next? This is Terry. Terry Ann, go ahead. I discovered happily a new thing with um, uh, an update to Zoom on my phone. I wanted to do a screen share with somebody. And in the past, um, I've had a dickens of a time trying to make that happen because you had to jump through so many hoops. Well, now that screen share button appears to be on, uh, and I was using voiceover and, and, you know, I was in a Zoom call, on a Zoom call, and it appears to be like right on the home screen now. And I just had to flick to the right several times and I'm noticing that they've made some changes to the layout of your iPhone. I, I have an iPhone SE 2020, um, but that share screen button was right there. And, and then when you double tapped on that, you could also share, um, share your audio, but she couldn't hear, she wanted to hear my voiceover. She was recording our session but she couldn't hear my voiceover. And I suspect it's because the, what is that called? Sound? Original sound. Virtual sound. Original I wonder, sound, yeah. Oh, original sound. Yeah, I wonder if that was turned off. If I had turned that on, then she might've heard my mm -hmm. voiceover or was would there be some other thing I need to do so that she could clearly hear my voiceover while I'm flicking, you know, across the screen. This is her but name. I was happy to know that the share screen is easy to get to now and easy to activate. All right, go ahead, Herbie. All right, if my keyboard to cooperate. So first of all, um, sharing your voiceover, uh, letting people for, hear your voiceover through the share screen is going to be the best method. Um, if you can't get that to work, then original sound is your second best method. 
but there are two major disadvantages with that one is you know it's still they're hearing the voice over through a phone speaker two they are likely to hear themselves echoing back at themselves but um so that's why i say it's a second but, but if you can uh get the screen shared to work that is the best method so wait a minute herbie are you saying that it does normally work and if it does work voiceover will come through i did I've gotten it to work once and it worked for like 20 minutes and then it didn't work and I have no idea why and that was even with rebooting the phone and things okay. like that. So it's um and that but this was like several months ago but I have gotten it to work. Yes. Okay. But just not consistently? Is that it? No, but to be fair, I've not tried it consistently either. I need to really I should do some more okay. experimenting with it. But All right. That's what I was clarifying. Okay, well, Terry Ann, keep trying, I guess. Yep. But Thank good. you. Okay, great. Good to know that. All right. This is Shri. Go, Shri. So I have a question for those who have the iPhone 14. So one of the things that you're supposed to be able to have is a better navigation with these, you know, you're supposed to get the L1 and L5 satellite to work to give you better navigation through, I guess, you know, like in very areas that have a lot of buildings and so forth. Have you guys noticed that it's giving you better GPS, you know, directions with the new phone or you notice not, or you notice nothing different? All right. Anybody noticing better? This is, this is Maria. Um, you know, now I, I feel like I'm going to have to pay more attention to this. I don't feel like um, and I, I haven't gone anywhere. Actually, I have gone, but I haven't tried GPS. Um, I was going to say I haven't gone anywhere unfamiliar, but I have, except I just haven't tried GPS. Um, I don't remember. Like, I, I have played with it, like, on my work route and such. I I don't feel like I got something that was, like, earth-shatteringly different. But I, I do feel like I want to play with it a bit more. I know I've played with, like, the door detection which you would have too in like the the 12 pro and the 13 pro and the max of those um but i'm not really sure that that is you know like better in and of itself from one phone to the other so um i'm actually i didn't know that about the uh the enhanced satellite band so now i feel like i'm gonna purposely have to play with that when i go somewhere on do you do you know like in which way were they supposed to be like more accurate in terms of pinpointing your uh, location or like, do you know in what way was, or is it just that they, uh, the signal is supposed to maintain better when you have that Canyon effect? This is true. Yep. yep. Go ahead. So on the, um, you know, in the announcement, when they announced the, the, the watch and the 14 yeah. pro, one of the things that they announced was that the pros and the, um, Watch Ultra is going to have the L1 and L5 satellite linked. And they're kind of the example with the jogger who's able to run through buildings and still be able to navigate because the L5 satellite was, you know, it can detect uh, your location much better, you know, where there's a lot of buildings that a normal L1 satellite might not, you know, see it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like for me, that's a big thing for, you know, navigation, like walking navigation, especially yeah. when you're in a, you know, in a city that has a lot of buildings and getting accurate uh, navigation. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to play with it because, yeah, like downtown, especially when I go to my, you know, office or like if I'm even actually even here, like when I just walk down the side, you know, there are restaurants and shops and things like they're, they're buildings. So, yeah, I guess I'll have to play with that a bit. That is that is interesting. Yeah, and this is true. And also, Mary, yeah. have you tested the door detection on a revolving door and <gasps> how well it works? I have not on a revolving door. That's a good one. That is a good scenario. If anyone else has tried it on a revolving door, how will it work? Yeah, I don't have any regularly occurring revolving doors in my life. But... <laughs> we, there are these, there, we have a revolving door at the doctor's office and it's like, they can slow it down. It's like this <laughs> giant thing. And, and then my dad's like, it's going too slow. And I'm like, okay, just go do they speed it up when you're around? I know. And one last traumatic experience when I was like six years old, I was in a revolving door somewhere in New York, I think. And 
some big guy pushed the button, pushed it really hard, <gasps> and I got stuck in the revolving oh. door. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a, yeah see this is why they they tell us i mean it can be done but like especially with these manual they're like i mean they're automatic they're like you know if you have another option with your guide dogs you might want to take the other option no i mean the guy was just me the little kid stuck in a revolving door it was quite scary all right yeah. okay we are, i'm not happy no we were, no no <laughs> We're glad you got unstuck. I am unstuck. I am fine, but I usually stay away from revolving doors after that. Okay, so very good. Thank you, Maria, for helping facilitate Thank tonight. You. And let's see all the people that had all these great questions and helped with answers. We are so grateful to you. Quick rundown of this week. Tomorrow, mini buzz on Clubhouse, five to six, Thursday. The book club, we're reading A Farewell to Arms, Ernest Hemingway, 6.30. And please come and support. Vincent will be leading the meeting. Then the Friday, I've been back with virtual movies. We're going to be watching Argo. It should be a very exciting movie. Uh, so come and based on a true story. So come check it out. And that'll be Friday. And then uh, just letting you know that there will not be a cafe this month due to conflicts in our schedule, but it, there will be one in December. All right, with that, we will say good night. Thank you all, have a great week. Be thinking about questions and we will be back next week. And with that, go Astros, good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Right. Hi everybody, thank you. Uh, 31, how can you go, go Astros? Go Astros. Keep going. Yeah, okay, go yeah. Astros. Yeah. They can't go any further. I'm not saying go Astros. They need help without a trash can.